Hey, I'm Mark Romanak and you're watching Fishing 411. If you like rainbow trout, stick around because hopefully we're going to put a few more like this in the boat. Good job, Dale. That's a great start, buddy. Thanks. Offshore Tackle presents Fishing 411 with Mark Romanak. Gobbled. Gobbled up there. <laughs> Look at that, he's in the bag. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, the leader in trolling technology. Okuma, high performance. Vicious Fishing. Northwest Ontario Tourism, there's no place like this. Jay's Sporting Goods. Get in gear. And by Yakima, home of the rooster tail. Got a little heft to him, Mark. That's yeah, going to be a good fish. That's definitely going to be a good fish. Get in here where you get the board off him. Tell you what, when he gets a little bit closer, if you reel that rod chip right down to the water yep. and reel that board in, then he won't uh, he won't pull the board underwater on you. If he pulls the board underwater, he could come up in a bad place, <laughs> <laughs> like under the other lines. On the Rainbow Trout Fishing Adventure, we're with Dale Voice. Now, Dale Voice is an old and dear friend of mine. I've known him for many years. Dale often goes with me on pre-fishing adventures, and in this instance, he actually got to go along and appear on camera. We were fishing in a body of water called Mullet Lake. There you go, he's all yours. Come tight on him. There he is. He must have been running our direction. Let me go back here and grab a landing net while you, uh, you work on that. Still got resistance there. Yeah, there's still something there. I wonder what. You just don't know what it is yet. There All right, it's there. It's a good one. A little closer. That's what we want right, right there. That's perfect. There's yeah, the baby. One. That is what we call an inland lake rainbow. Some of the people around here refer to them steelhead, but since they never leave these uh, inland lakes. It's uh, just a beautiful rainbow trout. Gorgeous thing. Emerald green color. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Couldn't be happier. All right. The way we targeted these rainbows, of course, is trolling. And we used inline planer boards, offshore planer boards, to get our lures out to the side. And the overwhelming presentation that produced the best was a small trolling spoon. In this instance, we were using mini streaks by Wolverine Tackle, and we were fishing in in conjunction with lead core. Three to five colors of lead core was getting our spoons down to the depth where those rainbows were holding out. That's what we're looking for. He's all yours, Dale. Got him. All right. I'll get a landing net. Another inland. I'm going to call him in a lake steelhead for I'm nothing take else. I'm going to a clicker off there uh, so it uh, doesn't uh, drive me make, insane. Make, so make something about noise. that. That clicking is a. It comes right to the sink right there. <laughs> That's what there we're looking There he is. I'm looking at him coming right at you. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, he jumps right at the net and jumps right over the net. I can't see him. Ease him. There we go. That was All the prettiest right. landing net. Jumped right over the net. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's still pretty perky. That's what I'm talking about. Beautiful rainbow trout. We're trolling in northern Michigan, and there's a host of lakes up in this part of the country. 
where you can catch rainbows like this, you can catch lake trout, and you can also catch brown trout, all intermixed if you know what to do. Stick around, because that's exactly what we're going to show you, how you can catch some, you know, some trout just exactly like this one for yourself. That's a sweet fish. Let's take a second and flesh out exactly what we're doing. We're in open water. We're trolling right now in about 80 foot of water. These open water basins, these trout are going to suspend. So we're trolling. That's the only practical way you're going to cover this water. There's a lot of water to look at. Secondly, we're going to use things like planter boards to get our lines out to the side. And there's a couple different presentations we're using to get our lures to depth. Uh, the first two fish have come on lead core line. So we're using lead core, a sinking line to get down to depth. We're also going to be using diving planers, and we've got downriggers mode on the boat as well today. When it's all said and done, I expect that all three of those presentations are going to catch fish. But right now, it's the leg core line and the planer board that seems to be getting the job done. Additional considerations provided by Evan Root Outboards and Starcraft Marine. Additional considerations provided by Ontario's Algoma Country. That's the minnow that that last steelhead just kicked up in the live well. And uh, so it gives you an indication what the forage base is here. This looks like a shad to me. Um, and shad based minnows tend to be up in the water column. They're not generally on the bottom. They're not a benthic creature. They tend to be pelagic somewhere up in the water column. And that's why the rainbows and the other trout that are in here are up in the water column as well because they go where their food goes. So, and of course for lures, any lure that closely imitates a minnow is gonna be good. So stick baits are gonna be good. Some crankbaits are going to work, and of course, spoons absolutely are going to work, and that's what we're using today primarily as spoons, but we're experimenting with some other lures. We'll see if that works as well. Mullet Lake has a great reputation in northern Michigan as a good body of water for fishing, but it's primarily known for things like smallmouth bass and walleye fishing. It actually has these landlocked rainbow trout there that are tremendous. They're beautiful fish. They don't get as big as, say, a Great Lakes steelhead, but they're an awful lot of fun, and they're fairly abundant. Outside board again. Same line that just caught one there, Neil. Right. I think we got us a hot spoon. We got a hot spoon here. <laughs> We're going to have to put some more lead core in the water, because that's <laughs> what's getting bit here. I'll take a look at the color of that spoon, too. We should be able to duplicate that. That one's got a lot of orange on it. I know there's a lot of orange in all of them because I'm I got some strong rainbow trout biases in that regard. But uh very glad perfect. He's all yours, Dale. Alright, got him. Alright, let's see about landing that. I haven't even seen this puppy. There he is. It's a wee one. It is a little one. This is a kickback right here. It's a wee one. But did you see how he pulled that board back? Yeah. This is just a little guy. This is a, I'm going to be real gentle with this one. This is one we want to definitely go back throw and grow back. up. Well, I could say one thing, Dale. The, definitely the orange seems to matter with the spoon, but more importantly, I think might be the size. Um, everybody just came on the bigger spoon. We haven't got any of the bites on the junior streak, so um, everything's coming on the minis. So we're going to stick with the minis for right now and, uh, and let, that, let that be our, our baseline. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. The color may be important, but I think it's the size of the spoon right now that's getting all the attention. Well, you look at that shad that we just had, that, that steelhead just puked up. That's about the same size as what, uh, what these spoons are. So mm -hmm. uh, we're matching the hatch a little bit in size there. Well, rigging up an inline planer board is really super simple. All I'm doing is I'm coming down and grabbing my main line. In this case, I have 20 pound vicious braid on here. I'm going to go ahead and slide it into my clip on the forward end of the board here. And this particular clip is called a snapper release. And you notice that it's got a cam lock on it. That's designed for braided lines so the line don't slip through it. Once I've got it in that position, then I go back to the back of the board and I've got a second release, an OR16, and I'm putting that on. And that's just my security blanket in case the line were to pop free from the front release. I still got the line attached to the board. And so once that's attached, all I have to do is lay it in the water, let line play off. And what I typically do Let's put the bait clicker in like that so it has a little resistance. And then all I have to do is just walk this thing up here, put it in the rod tree, and let it work its way out to the side. Well, we're three for four on these rainbows so far. Three of the bites have actually come on lake core lines on planer boards. That's not surprising. But we've also trolled all the way down through the lake in the deepest water basin of the lake that this particular lake has to offer. So it's time for us to turn around and make another pass up. 
Now, we've been using an electric motor to go downwind, and it's been beautiful. It's been perfect control, nice and quiet. Going against the wind, I don't think the electric motor is going to be strong enough, so what we're going to have to do is use a combination of the electric motor and the gasoline motor to work our way back upwind. And we're going to go a little faster this time and see if that doesn't help trigger a few more bites. <clears throat> but right now, uh, the pattern's starting to come together. If I can get this one out of your way. What a gorgeous way to spin. <laughs> And we, I'm not going to say we got it all to ourselves because there's another boat over there. But Is there actually another boat? Out? Yeah, there we is. actually almost have it to ourselves. This, this is a little better fish, Mark. Cool. Cool deal. Cool beans. Outside line again. Yeah, this those lead cores are just eating them up here right now. Just eating them up. Well, that fish is going crazy. All right, Mark, I'm going to bring this board up to you. You can swing it up over to me, that'll be great. Perfect. Well, that is a good fish, Dale. All right, stay right on the fish. Woo, now he's starting to jump a little bit. Oh, my goodness, got him. I bumped him, but then I got him. I'm getting handle on this guy. These spoons have really been working really good. These are what they call mini streaks. It's a Wolverine tackle product. We use them a lot. That is a beautiful rainbow. And we're starting to put together a pattern. What I think is happening here, of course, the spoons are all orange, and, and that's not uncommon. Um, this one here has got, a, has got kind of a copper back, and we've got a couple bites on that, but we've had more bites on the silver backs. So gradually, we've been swinging things over to orange fronts, silver backs, and that seems to be working really good. Um, but man, you gotta be careful with color, because you don't want to put too much emphasis on it. Color is not always the right thing. It's usually depth and speed is, is more important than color. But today, we're starting to figure it out that maybe color is going to matter a little bit. We are having an awesome day of rainbow fishing. Fishing 411 is brought to you in part by Precision Trolling Data, the Troller's Bible, now available in an app. Mark Romanek's Fishing 411 is brought to you in part by O.J. Herman Company. Well, now we're turning around and we're going to make an upwind pass. And you can catch these fish going both ways. You can catch them going upwind, you can catch them going downwind. But you have to pay attention to your speed because that's going to dramatically influence what your lures are doing, particularly the lead core. Lead core has been catching all of our fish at about 1.6 to 1.7 miles an hour. So when I turn around and go upwind, the electric motor is not going to have enough power to get the job done. So I'm going to have to use the outboard here to provide the basic power than the electric motor for steering and to tweak the speed. And the goal here is to try to match the speed going upwind, the same as it was coming downwind. If we don't catch fish going upwind, it's almost a guarantee we don't have the speed figured out. And, uh, and so that's a very critical part of open water trolling, monitoring that speed and trying to manage that speed to be the same upwind and downwind. You know, it's mid-September and it started out, it was frosty cool this morning, but it is no longer cool. So time to strip off some clothes. Let's turn it into one of the beautiful bluebird fall days. You know, that's the beauty of trolling, is that it's mathematical. I mean, once you figure out numbers, depths of what the fish are, lead lengths, it's pretty easy to reproduce it and duplicate what was working before. And that's all we're going to try to accomplish here on our upwind pass, is try to exactly duplicate what was working on the downwind pass. Here he comes. Here he comes. Uh-oh. This might be a different flavor. Oh yeah? Our show just took a mixed bag approach here. <laughs> now this looking like a, very much like a walleye to me. A walleye eye, it certainly is. Oh, how about that? <laughs> how about that? Oh, it fell off right in the landing there. Isn't that perfect? Well, let me get hands on this guy. That is a nice walleye. So, we're getting a mixed bag today. A little walleye to go with our rainbow trout. Same presentation same location. We really didn't do anything different other than the fact that obviously these walleye are feeding on the same shad that the uh, rainbows are. It's a good one. We'll take it. I've got three colors of lead core on here. A color of lead core is about 10 yards. So approximately, I've got approximately 90 feet of lead core line on here. I've got a leader on the terminal end, about 25 to 30 foot, and that's where my spoon is at. And then here in the back of the reel, I've got backing, monofilament backing. Now, I've got a good 200, 250 yards of backing on here. What we've been doing is just letting out the lead core, and as soon as the lead core comes off the rod tip, we put the planer board on and we send it out to the side. And that's what we're going to continue to do because that's been working for us. But if I wanted to go deeper, what I could do at this point right now 
and I'm just into the backing, I can zero up my line counter. And now as I let more line out, I could meter how much backing I'm letting out. So I could let out 20, 50, 100, 200 foot of backing if I wanted. And by letting out more backing, I'm allowing my lead core to fish deeper. So by having only three colors on, I don't have to just fish the depth of three colors. I can fish it deeper by letting more backing out. It's a great way to get the most out of lead core line fishing. Additional considerations provided by Lorance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living and bait rigs tackle. Let's talk a little bit about where a guy can duplicate this. In northern Michigan, there's a host of waters up here that all have trout in them. There's places like Higgins Lake, Crystal Lake, North Lake Leelanau, Mullet, Burt are just a few of the lakes that you could also duplicate what we're doing today. Green Lake is another one. So what you need to do is get in the directory, the DNR directory, and take a look and see what designated trout lakes you can find. Once you find those designated trout lakes, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna be able to do exactly what we're doing and be successful. This one is finally on a diver. Um, most of our fish have been coming on the riggers and the lead core, but this one is on a product called a rundown diver. It's a floating diver. They come in different sizes. This is actually a 20. And, um, and I had it back about 100 feet, so it was probably back down there about 18 to 20 feet down. Looks like another nice fish. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, I can see him back there flashing. It's, a, it's definitely a good fish. This is definitely a good fish. Never grabbed it at. Just to be ready. I can see that fish just a flashing down there. I got a nice long leader on here, so I'm going to have to back up and. Got him. All right, good All job, right. Dale. Good job. Whoa. Another beautiful steelhead. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. We've had a tremendous day here. And like I said, we caught this one on a little bit different presentation. Here in a second, I'll show you the diver. It's called a rundown diver. They float at rest and they dive like a crankbait. And then you just attach a leader to the back of them. And in this case, I've got a spoon at the terminal end. But what a stellar, stellar fish. They don't get any better than that one right there. They don't get any better. Like I said, we caught that last fish in a little different presentation. I've got it in my hand here. It's called a rundown diver. It's made by a company called Lurk. Uh, you may have seen these before. They used to be called a Trip Z diver. Um, and essentially what it is, it's a floating diving plane that dives, but it's not directional. It just goes straight down in the water. And that's why we've been putting them on planer boards to get them out to the side. It's got a locking mechanism on the front here. So when a fish hits, it trips on the front mechanism here and then it no longer is diving. The beauty of that is I only have to fight the resistance of the fish. I don't have to fight the resistance of the diver. So you click it in position to make it dive. When you get a bite, it pops open, and, uh, and then it comes to the surface. Of course, here at the back, I've got a, a fluorocarbon leader, and I've got a little bit longer leader than I normally use here because the water is super clear here where we're fishing today. So I've got about a 10-foot leader terminated all the way into a ball bearing swivel and then a silver streak spoon. This one happens to be a mini. And, uh, and that's the presentation that's been getting most of our fish today. Spoons seem to be the best way to get them. We've got them on lead core, we've got them on downriggers, and now we've got them on the rundown diver. You've had a great day. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this rundown diver. These floating divers like this are super popular amongst walleye fishermen in places like Saginaw Bay and Lake Erie, but you don't see them being used much for other types of fishing. In this inland water trout fishery we're doing, this is perfect. This is a perfect presentation. So all I had to do is snap the trip arm and the me mechanism into position. Now all I'm gonna do is just lay it in the water and I've already got my spoon in the water back there. You can see it flashing behind me and all I gotta do now is just play out line. And just like a crankbait, the more line you let out on these things, the deeper they're gonna go. And we found through trial and error today that 100 to 150 feet back seems to be the best place to be. One of the other advantages of floating style divers like this with the trip mechanism on them, all right, so I'm not catching any fish on the spoon that I got out there and I wanna, I wanna change it. A traditional floating diver, you gotta reel in that diver all the way and they're hard to reel in because they actually dive very hard and they pull really hard in the water. But this thing, because of the trip mechanism, all I gotta do is give it a pop like that, I trip the trip mechanism, and look at that, I can reel it in like nothing. So it makes it a lot easier to reel in, change lures, and reset. Floating divers, like the rundown diver that have a trip mechanism on them, that's the way to go. Let's see about getting this old board off here. You know, you can take these boards off yourself. Let me show you. If you're fishing by yourself, all I usually do is just choke up a little bit like this. And you can take the board off yourself pretty easy. What you want to do is hang on to the line where it's got the fish on it. Now all I'm going to do is just kind of come tight against the fish again here. Oops, there we go. There we go, just come tight against the fish. 
And I don't think this is going to be a walleye. He's pulling pretty hard right here. I think this one is going to be the desired species, another one of them rainbows. Well, most of our fish have been coming on three colors of lead core, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper and experiment, so I put a five color in as well. And that's what this one uh, is on right here, is on the five color. So by using a three color and a five color, we're very easily staggering our depths, fishing two different spectrums of the water column. And, uh, and in this instance, it looks looking good, looking like it's a, uh, whoa, there it can go. Looks like it's working out nicely. This is definitely not gonna be a walleye. It's, it's looking like a walleye. Got a mouth over like it's a got a walleye mouth on it. Let's see here. Maybe it isn't. That's a cool thing. You don't know what you're going to catch. It is a walleye. It's a walleye. I'll be darned. Yeah. Just another adult walleye. <laughs> That's bigger than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice walleye. All right. That's a good walleye anywhere especially up here in northern Michigan. I love it. All right. All right, we're going to eat good tonight. Look at the hat. That's ah, a steelhead up in the air, showing his colors. Oh, man, that is really exciting. Whoa. <laughs> the rigger finally strikes. This fish is going nuts. That's what we like to see. Dale, are you on the I'm net? I'm ready. I think he's about done, man. In this warm water, I think he's toasted. Got Look at him. that. Woo, baby. <laughs> I was just about to say, gee, this heavy, bright sun. Oh, man. Look seems at to that. slow things down and boom. Look at that. Look at Let me that. get him oh, out of there. Look at the color on that. a gorgeous, there. gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Now that <laughs> is a rainbow <laughs> trout. Wow, is that fun. Hey, my name is Mark Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 411. Hope you enjoyed today's show and maybe picked up a tip or two about how to catch these trout in inland waters. All across northern Michigan and lots of other places, you're going to find rainbows, browns, and lakers just waiting to get caught. Get out there and do it. See you here same time next week, same place. Closed captioning is provided by Cisco Fishing Systems. Innovation makes us number one. Quality keeps us there. Fishing 411 has been brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Okuma, Vicious Fishing, Northwest Ontario Tourism, Yakima Bait, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Look at the hat. That's a steelhead up in the air, showing his colors. Oh man, that is really exciting. Whoa. <laughs> The rigger finally strikes. This fish is going nuts. That's what we like to see.